Hello friends, this video on electric charges and fields part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 19 before going ahead with part 20. Go ahead and look at the electric field intensity due to a circular coil. So instead of the infinite long conductor, now we have a circular coil. So this is our circular coil which is a conductor carrying current. So we have to calculate the electric field at some point P which is located at some distance X from the center of the coil. So we have to find out the electric field at this point. So here also how do we find the electric field due to this entire coil? The approach always remains the same. We take a small element that small element we consider as a charge and then we find the electric field from that small element and then we integrate that. So integrating a small element throughout the coil makes us get to get the electric field due to the entire circular coil. So here also now we say that so we say that the radius of the coil is capital R capital R is the radius of the coil. We take a small element say AB. The length of this element is DL. Okay. Now since it is a very small element which we have taken and this R is the radius. Let us suppose that the distance of this element from the point P is given by this. Okay. So let us calculate. So what will be this distance? This is 90 degree, right? So this distance will be nothing but root over R square plus X square by Pythagoras theorem, right? So now we will calculate the electric field due to this small element at this point, right? So first of all, let us calculate the charge on the small element, charge on AB. That will be DQ. That DQ will be nothing but lambda DL. Well, lambda is the charge density on the circular coil. See, remember this is a circular coil which is somewhat like a ring. So it doesn't have a surface. So there will be no concept of surface density here. Sometimes people make mistakes. They think it is a circle and they write it as sigma DL. But sigma will come only when you have a surface area. If it would have been a plate, there you could have used sigma. But since it is a coil that is a ring like structure so we will use linear charge density that is lambda so we can say that the small electric field due to the electric field de due to the element dl at point p this will be given by de is equal to kq divided by r square so k dq divided by r square what is r r is the distance of this dl from point p that is equal to root over r square plus x square whole square so this is your electric field so this can be written as k lambda dl divided by r square plus x square right so this is the small electric field here now what would be the direction of electric field since we assume at this point a small positive test charge and we also assume that the charge here is positive therefore the electric field will act along this direction. So this would be the direction of DE. Let us call it as N. So this DE will act along PN. Right. So similar to the previous case here also we can see that this DE can be resolved into horizontal and vertical components somewhat like this. So if this angle is theta, this is also theta. So we call the horizontal component as DE cos theta and the vertical component as DE sin theta. Now here also by symmetry, if you see any element opposite to this on the circumference will have DE sin theta in the upward direction and DE cos theta along the same direction. So the sum of the elements along the y-axis will be equal to 0. So by symmetry, summation of DEY will be equal to 0. 
but summation of dex that is along the x axis that will not be equal to 0 so the contribution to the electric field will come from the x components so e will be equal to integration of de so and what is in de de can be resolved into de cos theta so that will be de cos theta so this de cos theta can be written as what is de de is k dq divided by r square plus x square into cos theta so now if you look at the figure what is cos theta in this triangle cos theta is nothing but base by hypotenuse so what is the base here it is x and hypotenuse is root over r square plus x square so this is the value of cos theta so we can substitute cos theta with this value right so let us write it as therefore electric field can be written as integration k lambda dl divided by r square plus x square into instead of cos theta we write it as x divided by root over r square plus x square so from this you can write k lambda x divided by r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 because r is constant which is radius of the coil x is also constant because we know at what point we have to find out the electric field so only variable here is your dl so this is integration dl so l will vary from 0 to 2 pi r what is 2 pi r 2 pi r is the circumference of the ring so this will be k lambda x divided by r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 into 2 pi r right so we can say that lambda into 2 pi r what is lambda linear charge density into the entire circumference is equal to q what is q q is the total charge on the coil so if q is the total charge on the coil then we can write the electric field as k q x divided by r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 so this is the electric field at any point due to a charge on a coil. So and this electric field will act along x axis. Right obviously because the y components got cancelled right. So the electric field will act along the x axis. So now after looking at this you would have understood that the approach remains the same even though the object changes the approach of finding out the electric field still remains the same. Now let us look at certain special cases based on the expression which we found just now. So what did the expression we found just now? We found that the electric field is equal to kqx divided by r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2. So in this expression what was x? x was the distance of the point P from the center of the coil right. So point P is nothing but the point where you find want to find out the electric field and what is R? R is the radius of the coil. So the first special case says what if x is very very greater than R that means the point at which we want to find out the electric field is very far from that particular uh, coil. So what will happen in that case if x is very very greater than r then this denominator in this denominator x square plus r square can be approximated as x square. So in that case we can write it as kqx divided by x square to the power 3 by 2 this 2 2 will cancel so this can be written as kq by x square let us take the second case where we say let us suppose if this coil 
has turns that means the coil has n number of turns it has been turned again and again over itself so if the coil has n number of turns then what happens to the electric field the electric field becomes k q n x divided by r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 so the electric field also becomes n times what if it, x is equal to 0 that means x is equal to 0 means the distance of the point is 0 that means the point is at the center you want to find out the electric field at the center so the electric field at the center becomes 0 because x is 0 so this entire things become 0 so electric field at the center is 0 thank you please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.